I call on the representative of Azerbaijan. Thank you, Mr. President. Over the years, the delegation of Armenia at the regular sessions of the General Assembly and in other international fora has done its utmost to convince the world community that their country is an island of democracy. Based on the facts testifying to the contrary, Azerbaijan has consistently rejected such allegations. Following the recent change of the government in Armenia, the new authorities themselves started to diligently blame their predecessors for authoritarian rule, systematic corruption, election, election rigging, and suppression of democracy and human rights, thus confirming, in, uh, confirming, in fact, that uh, what Azerbaijan has said from day one. After plenty of time has been wasted to listening outrageous lie from the Armenian officials in the past, the natural question arises as to whether and under what grounds the new government in Yerevan should be regarded differently. That the answer to this question should be negative is explained by a number of indicators, including in particular the discreditable legacy of persistent denial by Armenia of its responsibility for the war unleashed against Azerbaijan, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and acts of genocide. I would like to briefly focus on some uh, key issues. Firstly, the Nagorno-Karabakh region has always been and will remain an integral part of Azerbaijan, while the transfer of the Armenians into what the delegate of Armenia groundlessly calls the ancestral homeland started only in the 19th century. To assert the opposite is tantamount to rejecting the truth against the ba background of the thoroughly doc documented historical and legal evidence. Secondly, Armenia's actions were never peaceful in the past, nor were they peaceful at the end of 1980s when Yerevan resorted to force and violence in an attempt to realize its groundless and illegal territorial claims. Those actions started with the attacks on the Azerbaijani population in both the Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan and in Armenia itself, and culminated in brutal killings of thousands of Azerbaijani civilians and the expulsion of one million Azerbaijanis from their homes and properties. At the end of 1991 and the beginning of 1992, armed hostilities and attacks against populated areas within Azerbaijan intensified and escalated into a full-fledged interstate war. As a result, a significant part of Azerbaijan's territory, including the Nagorno-Karabakh region, the seven adjacent districts and some exclaves was occupied by Armenia. Thirdly, the speculations of the Armenian authorities with regard to human rights do not withstand criticism. Suffice to mention that unlike, unlike Armenia, which has implemented a policy of total ethnic cleansing of both its own territory and the Nagorno-Karabakh region and other occupied territories of Azerbaijan, my country has preserved its ethnic and cultural diversity to the present day. The international community has repeatedly expressed its indignation at the undisguised promotion by the Armenian authorities of the odious ideas of racial superiority, ethnic and religious incompatibility, and hatred towards Azerbaijan and other neighboring nations. The relevant United Nations bodies and other international organizations have more than once expressed their serious concern about the sp spirit of intolerance prevailing in Armenia and the discriminatory policies and practices pursued in that country. Thus, in, in its concluding observations on the periodic report of Armenia, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination expressed concern at reports, I quote, racist hate, hate speech and discriminatory statements in the public discourse, including by 
public and political figures, and in the media, in particular on the internet, mainly against religious minorities, asylum seekers, and refugees. Discrimination in the granting of asylum status ba based on ethnicity, religion, or national origin, and by the absence of legislation criminali criminalizing racist organizations and participation in such organizations. In its report on Armenia, the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance particularly noted intolerant statements against Azerbaijanis. Fourthly, any attempt by Armenia to encourage, procure, or sustain the unilateral secession of Nagorno-Karabakh is simply unlawful in international law. In its relevant resolutions, the Security Council condemned the use of force against Azerbaijan and the occupation of its territories and the attacks on civilians, reaffirmed respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of my country, the inviolability of international borders, and the inadmissibility of the use of force for the acquisition of territory. In response to territorial claims and forcible actions, the Security Council reconfirmed in those resolutions that the Nagorno-Karabakh region is an integral part of Azerbaijan and demanded immediate, complete, and unconditional withdrawal of the occupying forces from all the occupied territories. The resolutions of the Security Council provide authoritative clarification as to the committed acts, the violated obligations, and the duties to put an end to, to the illegal situation thus created. They qualified Armenia's actions as the unlawful use of force and invalidated its claims over the territories of Azerbaijan once and for all. The subordinate regime that Armenia has set up in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan is entirely unrecognized as such. It is under the direction and control of Armenia, and this has been confirmed by the European Court of Human Rights in its judgment of 16th June 2015 in the case of Chiragov and others versus Armenia. In other words, that regime is ultimately nothing other than the product of aggression, racial discrimination, ethnic cleansing, and uh, unlawful use of force. As a consequence, its illegality has been repeatedly stated at the international level. It follows uh, from this that Armenia's claims as to the so-called independent statehood of Nagorno-Karabakh or alleged self-determination are unsustainable in international law and thus null and void of initial. Needless to say, the whole foundation of the international legal order would collapse if such claims had succeeded. Finally, the delegate, uh, the delegate of Armenia referred to the peaceful resolution of the conflict, saying that there is no alternative to, to such solution. However, it is apparent that Armenia abuses this uh, peace process as a shield for pursuing its colonization and annexation policy and practices. The comments just made by the delegate of Armenia, along with many other public pronouncements by the Armenian authorities, testify that uh, this member state uh, and its policy, uh, uh, the policies of that uh, member state is, are based on falsification and misinterpretation and demonstrate how Yerevan is far from in engaging in a constructive search for peace. I thank you, Mr. President.